My name is Valerie and I am the Outreach Coordinator for Future Energy Systems. I want you to all close your eyes and picture a healthy earth. What do you see? Animals? Clean water? The shining sun? All of those things are part of a healthy earth, but you know what I see? I see plants, all different types and sizes of plants. Why do we need plants? Well, there's lots of reasons. We all like to breathe, right? Plants produce oxygen through a process called photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide and water are transformed using sunlight. By transforming carbon dioxide into oxygen and storing carbon in their tissues, plants help reduce the effects of climate change because carbon dioxide is a key greenhouse gas. All animals, including us humans, require plants for food and shelter. And plants are essential for maintaining a healthy soil. Plant roots keep soil from eroding, and plant litter adds essential nutrients and other components as the plant breaks down into the soil. I could keep going on forever with all the great things plants can do, but I'll stop. For now. But we remove plants when we build cities, cut down trees for building materials, and mine for important mineral resources. That's a problem because we know plants are important for a healthy earth, so we need to revegetate or bring back plants after these activities are done. Revegetation is a key step in land reclamation, which is the process of converting disturbed or damaged land back to what it was before or to something new. When we're revegetating an area, we have to decide what plants we want there. The decision may be based on what was there before, what the animals in that area need, what plants may be useful, or all of the above and more. Plants come in different shapes and sizes. Many plants have different growing or germination requirements. What is germination? Germination is when a plant emerges from a seed and turns into a seedling. Testing germination is an important part of revegetation and what we're gonna to do today. Any ideas why it's important? Well, let's think about it. If I want 10 plants to grow in an area, maybe I'll plant 10 seeds. If all 10 of those seeds germinate, that's awesome. That means we have 100% germination and that we'll have 10 seedlings, although they could die or get eaten later. But if only five of my 10 seeds germinate, that means I only have a germination rate of 50%. A lot of the time, many seeds do not germinate. And this could be because we don't have the right conditions. Maybe not the right lighting or the right amount of water or the right temperature for the seed to germinate. Knowing what the seeds need to germinate is really important when you're planting. It's also important to know how many of the seeds are actually gonna turn into seedlings. Knowing germination rate means that we can plant the right number of seeds to get the number of plants you want in the end. So, we're gonna test germination rate. How do we do that? We need to do some science. First thing we need, our seeds. Seeds come in all different shapes and sizes. We're gonna test the germination rate of two different species today, barley and blue flax. You can try seeds from your garden, from fruit that you eat like apples, or buy some from a store. So we're gonna need some supplies. You need a container to put your seeds in. So I have a Petri dish, but you can also use a plate in a Ziploc bag. Then you need some paper towels. And finally, you need something with water, so a cup of water or a squirt bottle. So step one, you're gonna take your container, your plate or your dish, and you're gonna put a folded up piece of paper towel in the bottom. Then you're gonna squirt some water on it. You wanna make sure the paper towel gets really wet, but you don't want any extra water in the container because that could mean that the seeds are floating. So let your paper towel get wet and then dump any extra water out into an extra container. Now, if you're using a plate with a Ziploc, you would just put your paper towel here and then tuck your plate back in. Now, we're gonna add the seeds. I'm gonna add 10 seeds because that gives us a large sample size and makes the math really easy. So you can add however many you want, but make sure you know exactly how many you added. Now, we need to put these two containers somewhere warm. 
but not too hot. And one thing to remember, if you're using the Ziploc and the plate method, make sure you don't seal the Ziploc because it still needs, the seeds still need some oxygen. I'm gonna put mine by the window where it gets some sun and is a bit warmer. It will take a few days to see if your seeds germinate. For a seed to germinate, it needs the right conditions. That could mean the right temperature, amount of water, or light. As I said, many different species have different requirements. Some seeds will germinate in the light, whereas others need the dark. Imagine if your seed was growing underneath the soil or was buried underneath a snowbank. It would need to be able to germinate in the dark. So maybe you should test your seeds in the light and in the dark. It may be too warm or cold where you're testing your seeds. Generally between 15 to 20 degrees Celsius is a good temperature because it's the temperature that we have in springtime when most of our seeds are germinating. So try your seeds in places all over your house that might have different temperatures and see if that impacts your results. You also need to make sure that your seeds stay damp. So anytime it looks like your paper towel might be drying out, add a bit more water. This can be really hard in nature because sometimes it might not rain for a really long time or the soil where your plant is growing might not hold very much water. Some plants may never germinate. This could mean that it's dead or that it's dormant. That means that the seed is going through a sleep period that keeps it from germinating until the exact perfect conditions are met. We can break dormancy or wake the seed up by mimicking some of those conditions. For example, we could keep the seed somewhere really cold, which is like winter conditions that some seeds need to go through before they germinate. Other seeds might need to be eaten by an animal so that the hard outer layer of the seed can be removed. In this case, we can scratch the surface of the seed to encourage germination. Some seeds need to be exposed to different chemicals, temperatures, light, or even fire. When these environmental conditions are met, it tells the seed that it's the perfect time to grow. So the seed wakes up and germinates. For many species, we know what they need to germinate, but for others, we're still learning. So it's been a couple days. Let's see if we have any germination. We do. Do you see that little white part? That is the radical which forms the root, the first thing that emerges from the seed. In nature, it will attach to the ground, keeping the plant where it is and starting to absorb water. So what happened during germination? First, the seed absorbs water and the outside starts to swell and soften. This step is called imbibition. Next is a lag period where things start to happen inside. The seed breathes and starts to make and store food and proteins. Finally, we have the step we see here, root emergence, where the plant starts to grow and emerge from the seed. Now, are you all ready to start recording your data? Download the data sheet from below the video and we'll get started. This is your data sheet. On it, we're gonna record how many seeds germinate. Every day, check your container and count how many seeds germinated and mark it on your data sheet. Then, remove those seeds. The reason we remove them is because we don't wanna accidentally double count them later. You're gonna keep monitoring for at least a week or two until no more seeds germinate. So I've been monitoring my seeds for a couple weeks and now it's time to figure out the germination rate. How do we do that? Little bit of math. So step one is to count the total number of seeds that germinated from each of your species. So for barley, I had nine seeds germinate. And I know that I originally planted 10. So that means my germination rate is nine out of 10, or 90%. With blue flax, on the other hand, I had zero seeds germinate which means I have a 0% germination rate. The reason that blue flax didn't germinate could mean that the seeds are dead, or like we talked about, they could be dormant and we would need to break that dormancy before they would germinate. So what did you guys get? Did your seeds germinate? What was your germination rate? Let us know on Facebook or our website, and thanks so much for learning about germination with me today. I hope that you can get out there and revegetate all the places that you love. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.